problem. Wait, we're done. That continues the lesson about zeros of polynomial, but we are doing uh, lesson three entitled zeros of polynomials. Well, we've already been looking at zeros, but there's so much more to it than just, oh, here it is on the graph. It's, it's where it crosses the, the wonderful x-axis. So I have this beautiful polynomial and I can say to myself, well, I have a real zero here. I have a real zero here. I have a real zero here and one here and probably one over here. That looks like it goes down forever and that goes up. So those are my real zeros. There could also be complex zeros that don't show up on the, on the graph. Um, okay, I just so happen to see, Aaron, I don't know what you mean. Why, sir? Why what? Why are, why are these real zeros? You can talk. I was talking about the chat, sir. What in the chat? You chatted. I just saw yours come up. I don't usually stare at my computer, but I was at that angle. I saw yours come up. You said, why? You're, you're replying to somebody else's chat? No, I'm replying to you because you sent me a message. Who sent you a message? You did. It says you did. No, I didn't send no message. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, well, you know, I, I think did I send a private to one person, but I thought it was maybe I sent it to the wrong person. I can't remember what the the question was. I guess I better look. Oh, yeah, it, it went to the wrong person. Let me fix it. Okay, <laughs> so was it you? <laughs> okay. Uh, let me type this in. Did it while. Okay, I send it to the right person. I, it's very small on my computer, so sorry to bother you. <laughs> Mystery solved. Okay, um, we're going to learn some theorems today. And uh, one's called the factor theorem, one's called the rational zeros theorem, one's called the conjugate zeros theorem, and, and then Descartes rule of sign is actually kind of a theorem, but it's not really a theorem, it's just a rule that Rene Descartes came up with. And uh, so let's start with the factor theorem. I don't think I'm going to get this all finished because some of these problems take a long time. This may be a two-dayer. For any polynomial f of x equals f of x, which is any polynomial like this one right here, f of x, x minus k is a fact of a polynomial. What that means is, whoop, I didn't mean to move that thing over. If I cross the axis here at some zero, and I call it k, k could be a five for that matter. And we talked about that if I did synthetic division on that five, and I have some terms here, and then we added straight down, added straight down, out comes out a zero. The remainder is a zero when you did synthetic division. That's because when you plug in a 5, the y value is 0 right here. The y value is 0. f of 5 is 0. So we call that k. And so if you want to think about it, the, the, that means x equals to 5 is a 0. But if you want to move that 5 over, I get x minus 5 equals to 0. Now that I wrote it like that, this is a factor. Like when you're factoring a, a quadratic. I'll just I'll make one up here. If this is 2 and this is a negative 2, and I have this beautiful upside down parabola, then x minus 2 and x plus 2 could be a, f a factor. But since it's upside down, there's probably a number in front, like a negative 1 or something. 
so we put an A, but just for the, that doesn't really affect the factor because even if there was like a negative out front of the whole thing to make it upside down, if you divide everything by A, it goes away anyway. So really the only factors I have is X minus two and X plus two, X squared minus four. But the, that tells you that, let's see, X squared minus, there might have been a, a number in front, like the original polynomial could have been negative x squared plus 4. And if I factor out that negative x squared minus 4 is what I have here. So my point is this. You can take your k and do x minus that k to come up with a factor. So right here, he said, let we're going to check for a negative x minus 1. He wants to check to see if that's a factor. If that's a factor, then this ought to be true. Okay? And if that's true, then x equals to 1 must have been my, my x value of a 1 is where this thing uh, probably had to cross through at a 1 if x minus 1 is a factor. So he's asking us to check it. Well, how would I check to see if x equals to 1 gives you f of 1 equals to 0? How would I check for that? I would use synthetic division. It's the fastest way. Oh, you, I beat you this time. Normally, you're way ahead of me, like five miles ahead, but you're right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do my two coefficient my three coefficient, up. Oh, I'm missing one. There's a four and a two, so I'm missing the third power. So there must be a zero. Sometimes I forget those zeros. I don't know about you. Sometimes I forget them. If I have a four to a two, there must have been a, there must have been a zero x to the third power. So I need to make sure I put a zero here. Now I put my three. Then after two is a one, so I'm to minus five. And then there's my constant with no power, that's the same thing as 7x to the 0. That's very important, so that's going to be a 7. I divide out, using synthetic division, x equals to 1. And how will I know if it is? What should be the answer right here? The final thing here should be a 0. That's the yeah. question, yeah. That's that's the secret right here. If that's a zero, I'm good to go. So here goes. This sort of review, you guys who was doing synthetic division. Two, one times two, zero plus two, one times two, three plus two, one times five, negative five plus five is zero, one times zero, zero. Oh, I, I don't think it is. Unless I did the math wrong. I'll give it a second for you smart people to take a look at it because, what'd you say? It's not, it's not, it's not a zero. It's not a zero? You agree with my work? Bummer. Yeah. Because what I really got here was a seven. So that means it's not a factor. You got a seven too? Okay, so let's do the other one. Uh, he wants to check for the same K, I think. X, X minus 1 is a factor. Again, if X minus 1 is a factor, that means X minus 1 equals to 0. That means X has to be a 1, if it's true. So I'm going to do it again here. Here goes. A 3, that's a fifth power. A negative 2 is a fourth power. A 1 is a third power. A negative 8 is a second power. A 5 is the first power. And a 1 goes to the 0 power. I'm dividing out. X equals to 1. And, and when I'm crossing my fingers, and I'm hoping that I get a zero here. That's what I want. I want a zero here to say yes. Okay, so here it goes. Three, multiply. Three goes up. Add. You just add straight down. Multiply again. One. Add straight down. Multiply again. Add straight down. I'm getting bored. Multiply again. Add straight down. 1 times a negative 1 is a negative 1. Ah, perfect. This one was no. 
This one is yes. It's as simple as that to test a factor. Okay. Factoring a polynomial with a given zero. This time he's saying, I want you to factor this whole thing. What? When do we factor tri I mean a cubics? We don't factor cubics too often. The reason we don't is because they're hard to factor. So, you know, I'm hoping I can get this one to work for me, but there's really no guarantee. So I'm just going to try it. Let's see. He said, at least he's telling me that one of the zeros is a negative three. He's guaranteeing it works. Well, look what happens when we divide by x equals to a negative three. If he said x minus, minus three is a zero, that means x equals a negative three. That means x plus three is a factor. That is a factor. So I gotta, I gotta keep that in mind. If that's a factor, I'm gonna do my synthetic division. Six, 19, two, negative three, I don't have any missing zeros. And he said for, for a fact that a negative three is a zero. So I should get a zero right here. It should work out because he told me, he told me it is, okay? So six, negative 18, one, negative three, negative one, positive three, and sure enough, zero. But you're, but you're asking me, why did I do that work if I already knew it was the answer? When you know that one thing is already a factor, that means the leftovers is a reduced polynomial. It means once I factored out the x plus 3, you have another polynomial next to it that this factor times the remainder will be my original 6x cubed plus 19x squared plus 2x minus 3. You know that x plus 3 times some other polynomial has to be the whole thing. So what do we do is we take this remainder here, and if this was a third degree polynomial, my leftovers is a second degree. It's always one less because you already pulled out one of the x's. So really what I have is x plus 3 times 6x squared plus x minus 1 is the original polynomial. Now he wants me to factor the whole thing. But see, he only gave us one factor, x plus 3. But now that I pulled out the x plus 3 and come up with the 6x squared plus x minus 1, I'll bet you most of you can factor that quadratic in your head. I bet you you can factor this in your head. Let's see. What would that be? The x plus 3 is still part of the answer, but I just want to factor this piece. Anybody have any guesses? Or do I got to do it my way? You know, the first number has to be a 6 or a 1. Or a 6 and a 1, or a 3 and a 2. And you want to add up to a positive 1 here, and you want to multiply them to get a negative 1. So I know one of the answers is 3x and the other is 2x. It has to be. So you got to ask yourself, how do I get a negative 1? One of these must be a positive, one must be a negative. The question is, will this work? 6x squared minus 3x plus 2x, that doesn't work, does it? What must I do? Reverse the signs. This time I just did it by guessing, you know, because I didn't want to, yeah, I'm just going to say it has to be that way then. Let's see, 6x squared, positive 3x minus 2x is a positive 1. An, uh, a negative 1 times a positive 1 is a negative 1. So there they are. There's your three factors. And when you multiply them all together, it should give you this tri, this cubic, this third degree polynomial. I'm, I'm not really excited of, of doing more work. Six, um, 
since people have come in the room since I started the lecture, uh, make sure all of you post in chat that you're here. Everybody should post in chat. That way I can double check in case I marked you absent and you really did show up. Okay, so the, every one of you should put your name in chat. All right, that one's done, I hope. I, I hope my geniuses in the class agree with this answer. Because, you know, I'm only human. You prick me, I bleed. You pull my hair, I cry. I make mistakes. Example three. Okay, he's doing the rational zero, zero theorem. Rational zero theorem. But this is kind of interesting. If you have a polynomial, and I'm going to call this number a Q, and I'm going to say this is my highest power. And then I have some other terms all the way till I get to my last term that has x to the zero power. That's a constant term. I'm going to give that, const that number a P. And the number in front of my highest term, I'm going to give a Q. Those two numbers are very important. The reason we call this the rational theorem is because someone just popped in the room. It took me a long time. If you just came in the room, please uh, put your name in chat so I know who you are. Um, if you make fractions, well, actually, I shouldn't even say it's P. P is not really a P. It stands for a number that we use as P. It's the factors of P that I care about. Factors of P over the factors of Q. Actually, the factors themselves are different P's and different Q's. I'm just trying to make this understandable to us all. We look at those two numbers and we say my possible zeros are always going to be the factors of P plus or minus over the factors of Q. And I don't have to do plus or minus again because if I do plus or minus again, then what happens is it just can't, it's repetitive because a plus one, a plus P over a negative Q is identical to a negative P over a positive Q. So we tend only to say plus or minus P's over Q's. Okay, now I got to figure out how he's filling this out. If, if P over Q is a rational number, which means fraction, written in lowest terms, and if P over Q is a zero of F, a polynomial function with integer coefficients. That's important. All my coefficients, they have to be integers, not fractions. Then P is the factor of the, I'm going to say, uh, constant term. Constant term, which I said that a minute ago. It's, it's the factors of the constant term, because X to the zero stands for one. And then it says, then Q is a factor of the, that would be called leading coefficient. Don't you love it how they get complicated? I'd rather just show you how to do the problem. But he wants us to, I mean, it is important as you become a mathematician. Some of you guys will be, because of the programs you'll be in college, some of you will get enough math credits to actually qualify to teach mathematics in the high school. Allison, see me at 315. Okay, so list all possible rational zeros. This means possible, it doesn't mean they are. So you look at this number here, it's a two. The factors of a two give me a plus or minus two oh, or a plus or minus one. Those are the only factors of two. And then this number here, six, I'm not going to do plus or minuses now because I just did my plus or minuses with this one. So I'm just going to say a six, a one, a two, and a three. So those are my factors of six. These are my factors of two with the plus or minus. So now if I start list listing all my plus or minus P's over Q's, I start listing them. Okay, here goes. I could have a 2, 
over a 6. I could have a negative 2 over 6. And then I can reduce them if I want, and I probably will afterwards. Th that's two of them. Then I could have a 1 over 6 and a negative 1 over 6. Those don't reduce. That just took care of that one. I start over again. Plus or minus 2 over 1. That's 2 over 1. And a negative 2 over 1. Well, that just turns into a, a negative 2 and a positive 2. Then I have my uh, 1 over 6. I mean, sorry, 1 over 1. Or a negative 1 over 1. So now those are all done. Now I'm on the 2. I could have a... I'm going to continue on this side here. I could have a plus or minus 2 over 6. We did that one. Already. 2 over 2. That's plus 2 over 2. Or a negative 2 over 2. You'll see those repeated. The negative 1 and positive 1 is over here somewhere. I think I did it somewhere there. So I'm done with the, uh, let's see, the 2. Now I do the 1. 1 over 2. Negative 1 over 2. Now the, the 2s are done. I got my 3s. I have a 2 over 3 negative 2 over 3, or I have a 1 over 3 and a negative 1 over 3. Once you reduce all those and cancel out any repeats, you would have to list them. It's a whole bunch, isn't there? I'm not even going to finish it up. I, I want you to clean it up. 2 over 6 stood for 1 third, didn't it? Didn't I create a 1 third over there somewhere else? Yeah, here's a positive 1 third over here and a negative 1 third. So these actually, I, I don't have to worry about them. 1 over 6, those didn't come up anywhere else, so I'll keep those. 2 over 2 is actually a 1. So I have a 1 right here, if you think about it. That's really a 1. So that one's a repeat. And then negative 2 over 1. Well, I already have a negative 2 over 1 somewhere. No, I don't. That's my only 2 over 1, so I'll keep it. 1 over 1 minus 1 over 1, I, I keep those two. 2 over 2, and a negative, those are already used up, aren't they? 2 over 2 is a, is a 1. I already have that. Negative 1, I already have that. Okay, so you keep deleting the extras that are repeated. The point is now, what do I do with all those? Because those only told me, those were my possible zeros. Find all rational zeros and factor f of x into linear factors. So f of x was 6x to the 4. And this is why it takes a long time. Because if you don't use your calculator, you're, you're going to have to guess plus 2. So you list, you're going to start doing some synthetic division. 6, 7, negative 12, negative 3, and a 2. And you have to decide which of those that I did not cross off will I attempt to try to find. Remember, there's four possible zeros here. There's four possible real zeros. My advice to you is start with the easy ones, like uh, 2 over 1. The factor, so we have 2. So there's no magic, guys. There's no secret. Which ones do I try? I don't really know. If I cheated, use my calculator, I could probably guess a couple of them. But I'm just going to show you what real people have to do. I'll try it too. 6, 12, 19, 38, uh, 26, 52. It's not looking good, is it? 49, 98. No, it's not looking good. So... That one didn't work. So I'm going to try the negative 2. Because there is no secret, guys. It's called sweat, blood, and tears. Unless you cheat and use your calculator to help find some. Now, as I do with a negative 2, I want you to grab one of the others that we could possibly use to see which one will work. If I were you, I would probably grab the plus or minus 1 over the plus, over 1. That's a good one to try. 
Uh, maybe even a half might be a good one or a negative half. So pick one and, and try to beat me to the punch. Try to find one before I can. Because I'm not, I'm not playing a game. I, there's no magic. It's just hard work. Okay, now some of you guys are just going to sit there and wait for, uh, for me to get lucky and find one. Or you'll wait for another student who, who works ahead and says, you know, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to see if I can find it, but it's a guessing game. Okay. So let me finish up this one here. I'm doing the minus two. Let's see if it works. Six, negative 12. That's a negative five. Be careful of your negatives. If you mess up on one sign, you may have lost the zero that you had. Uh, 10, negative 2, 4. Oh, my gosh. I got lucky. Negative 2. Bingo. I won. I found one of the factors. X plus 2 has to be a factor. One also worked. And you already did it? Okay. So what I'm going to show you yeah. what to do since Sondos helped me out. What you can do, Sondos, I don't know if you realize this, once we have one or the other, you can start brand new with the, the reduced set. And what happens is by starting with the reduced set, you obviously know that now your factors are, are factors of one over the factors of six. They got smaller. So you already told me one works. So I should be able to use a one on the new set. What most people do is they do this. Okay, I found one. So now I'm just going to do a one right here and see what happens. And just, you know, you're trying new ones. I, I tried the minus two and the plus two, and I found one. So Sondos found the one. So look what happens. I'll do it here first. Six, six, one, one, negative one, negative one. And see, it did work. So we know for a fact that x minus 1 is a factor. Now, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to do it again just because I want to show you something. 6, 6, 1, 1, negative 1, 0. The remainder now, since this started out as a fourth degree and this is a third degree, this must be a second degree. 6x squared plus x minus 1 is your new polynomial. I bet you any money there are people in this class who could factor that by hand. Anybody want to take a guess what it could be? I think we just I think we've done this one already. Remember yeah, we, we did it, right? He threw the same polynomial in here just to make our lives easier. Thank you very much, author. I appreciate it when they do something nice. So it was 2x and a 3x, and it had to be uh, minus 1 and a plus 1 here. I think that was it, right? 6x squared, uh, 3x minus 2. Yeah, there it is. So there's my other two factors. So i got to put it with the other two. Sondos found x uh, minus 1. I found x plus 2. This equals to our original f of x. Okay? Now, if you look at the other two, I did tell you guys, I said, why don't somebody try a 1, somebody try a negative 1, somebody try a half. Look, 2x plus 1 equal to 0 would have been x equals to a negative half. You, if you'd have tried a negative half, you would have won the prize. Or if you'd have tried... 3x minus 1 is 0, x equals to a 1 third. If you'd have tried the 1 third, you would have won a prize. But I'll be honest with you, those aren't the first ones I try. I'm too lazy. They're harder to try the 1 half than the 1 third. Did anybody try a half or a negative half? Nobody tried it? Okay. Well, I appreciate Sondos for getting the other one because, because of mine and Sondos, we reduce this to a quadratic, which you can factor it or you can use quadratic formula. Okay?
it, that was a lot of work. All right, number of zeros. There actually is a theorem called the fundamental theorem of algebra. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, but we're not algebra. We're in pre-calculus and college algebra. Yeah, but this fundamental theorem of algebra has to do with how to find my zeros, because that's what algebra was for, how to find our solutions. Every function defined by a polynomial of degree one or more has at least one complex zero. What does that mean, one complex zero? A plus bi. X equals to A plus bi. Even if b is equal to zero. If b is equal to zero, then it turns out to be x equals to a. Duh. Which that's what we just did right now. We found a whole bunch of a's. Those are my zeros. But if b is not zero, it is possible that x could equal to a uh, 2 plus 3i which means you will never find that in the, you will never find this in the picture because you can't find it. It doesn't cross the x-axis. This is imaginary, the two plus three i. But it is possible that that could be one of your zeros, even if it's not a real number. So they're just telling you every polynomial has at least one complex. Could be imaginary, could be real, could be a couple of each. Number of zeros theorem. A function defined by a polynomial of degree n, that's the highest power, at most has at most n distinct zeros. A cubic has three. A fourth degree has four, like we just showed you. A quadratic is degree two, it has two zeros. Sometimes those zeros are not real. Remember, we talked about the, the parabola that never crosses the x-axis. It still has two zeros. You just have to use the quadratic formula and find out that, that uh, b squared minus 4ac was a negative number, which meant you have a square root of a negative number. So now that we understand how many zeros I always must have, he says, find a polynomial function f of x of degree three. So that means he's starting out with some number degree three. And it has real coefficients that satisfies the given conditions. Let's see. He says the zeros are, here's one of them, here's one of them, here's one of them. Well, he gave me all three. Why is he giving me this? Because remember when I shared with you earlier that if, if x minus 1, x equals a negative 1, then x plus 1 must be a factor, right? So I got x plus 1, I have x minus 2, and I have x minus 4 is equal to my polynomial. But there could be a negative something factored out, or it could be a positive number factored out, who knows? So what we do is we say these three terms still could have a number out front. So knowing this, if I know for a fact that f of 1 is 3, then f of 1 would mean this, a times 1 plus 1, 1 minus 2, 1 minus 4, has to equal to 3, because f of 1 equals to 3. The reason I need this I need to always find out what the leading number could have been that was factored out. So if I know that x is a 1, I'm going to get a y value of a 3. Then I take my factors that equal my polynomial here with the a in front, and I'm going to solve this. So this looks like 3 equals 2. And a times a 2 times a negative 1 times a negative 3. That means 3 equals 2... Uh, See, negative 6, positive 6a, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. That means a must be a half. So he wants, to, he wants me to find the whole polynomial. 
So here goes. It's going to be hard. 1 half times x plus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 4 is my polynomial. There's f of x. He wants you to multiply this all out and give, the, give what the answer is. So I'm going to do, leave the 1 half. I'm going to multiply these two. Feel free to help me out x plus 1 times x minus 2 is x squared minus 3x minus 2. Then I have to multiply by this x minus 4. So I'm still leaving the half out. Okay, now this is harder. Please double check my work. I got my 1 half times x squared times x is x cubed x squared times a negative 4 is negative 4x squared. Negative 3x times x is a negative 3x squared. Negative 3x times a negative 4 is a positive 12x. Negative 2 times x is a negative 2x. Negative 2 times 4 is, or a negative 4. I hope I did negative 4 every time. I hope I did. Is a positive 8. Did I, did I do those right? Yes. Okay, so then this is my function. That's still my f of x. I now need to merge in the half. So 1 half x cubed, 1 half of 4 would be a negative 2x squared. That gives me a negative 3 halves. Oh, that's cubed. I'm sorry. Cubed. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, these two can add together, can't they? Let me, let me erase that work. Combine like terms is always a good rule. 1 half. I have the x cubed, negative 4x squared, minus 3 squared is a negative 7x squared. These two go together. This 2x and minus 2x would cancel if I did it right. Then I have a plus 8. Okay. It's better to simplify. No, sir, you don't, no, you don't cancel. It's 12x minus 2x. Oh, it's a 12. Oh, it's a 12. I didn't see my writing. Okay, so what does that become? 10x? Thank you for reading my handwriting. All right, so now I got half of each of those terms. x cubed over 2 minus 7 over 2x squared plus 10 over 2 is plus 5x. 4 over 2 is plus 4. There's my, there's my polynomial. Of course, if I did it right. Never any guarantees. But I got Sondos. And, and others, too. I know you're out there. You just tired. B. What if negative 2 is a 0, but it's a multiplicity of 3? It means there's three zeros of that. That looks like this. Let me show you what B looks like. Let me get this out of the way. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. That means x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2. If x equals a negative 2, then x plus 2 equals to 0 must be a factor. But he said multiplicity of 3. And then there's always this mysterious a in front that I don't know. And equals to f of x. But he's telling me right now that when x is a negative 1, the y is, is a, is it a 4? So a times negative 1 plus 2 times negative 1 plus 2 times negative 1 plus 2. Boy, I could have done that better, couldn't I have? equals f of a negative 1, which all equals to, a, he says, a 4. We only do that so we can find the a. Okay? So 4 equals 2. Negative 1 plus 2 is a 1. That's a 1. That's a 1. a is 4. So my polynomial must be a 4 times an x plus 2. To, well, there's three of them. And I'm only listing three of them because I have to multiply them out. I wish you would do it instead of me, but four times. Why did I put a three for? Because I'm thinking of the number three. There was three of them. X plus two times X plus two is X squared plus four X plus four. Now I still have to multiply it by another X plus two. 4 times, I'm just going to do it, you're not helping me, so x cubed 
plus 2x squared plus 4x squared plus 8x, last I'm on the 4 now, plus 4x plus 8. Combine like terms, 4, let's see, do I have, I have only the x cubed. I have 2x squared plus 4x squared, so that's 6x squared. I have 8x plus 4x, that's 12x. Then I have my plus 8 equals to f of x. And if I multiply in by a 4, the real polynomial is 4x cubed plus 24x squared plus 48x plus 32 is my polynomial function. That's, I told you this was a lot of work. And I could probably make 10 mistakes a minute. It's just a lot. You just need to practice a lot of them. Uh, I'm not going to get any further, so I'm going to call it right here. We're going to pick up with the conjugate. Oh, yeah, this is tough anyway. The conjugate zero theorem. We'll pick up with that on when? Thursday.